thank you for being here in this very large space, but it's a very important topic we want to talk with all of you tonight, and that's the transition to middle school. So thank you for being here. I'm Peg Laswicki. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Student Services, and we have a panel of wonderful people here that are going to talk to you about what the transition to middle school will be like. And as they present, they will introduce themselves rather than having me go through and introduce everybody right now. Um, and we will have time for questions towards the end. Um, so don't worry, um, you'll have that opportunity. So feel free to jot them down as we're going through the presentation and we can make sure we um, answer all of those at the end. So we are hoping that all of our fifth graders have a very smooth transition to the middle school. As we know, it's pretty, you know, anxiety ridden for some of them as well as you. So we're hoping that tonight we can calm some of those fears and answer your questions and um, make sure that we are off to a good start um, come next school year. So again, thank you for being here. All right, uh, my name is Lori Namowitz. I'm the principal here at Thomas Middle School. Uh, thank you so much for coming and joining us tonight. It's great to have you here in the house of Thomas. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the transition timeline. So we have already started this. January and February is when we have our planning meetings between our staff at the elementary and middle school. Um, March, April, and May is when we start to actually host those transition IEP meetings and we take student tours. Um, both buildings have uh, collaborated on the schedule for what that looks like for when parents are gonna come in and for, for when students are gonna come in. And we look forward to having both groups do that. Um, you'll have an opportunity to walk around the building and then meet with the administrators. And then you'll have an opportunity to meet with your current IEP case manager as well as what could be your future IEP case manager. Somebody from the middle school will represent the team at that meeting. In June, we transfer, all, we transfer all the student files over to the middle school buildings. And then in August, before school starts, um, both buildings have traditionally hosted some type of sixth grade event, uh, whether it's setting up lockers or coming in for a half day of activities. We hope to do that again this summer. Um, case managers typically reach out to families ahead of time in August as well, and then we begin the school year. So just as a reminder, um, the teacher that you meet from the middle school may not be the case manager for your child, but they will definitely be the one helping to communicate that information that is shared during that meeting that you have. And then typically one of the administrators or the special education coordinator attends that meeting as well. All right, All right I'm on. Hello, I'm Jim Morrison. I'm the principal over at South Middle School. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, I get the t uh, topic of looking at a typical middle school day. Actually, there's never a typical middle school day. If you, you know, every day is a little bit different, it seems. But structure-wise, um, kids have a 10-period school day. Nine of the periods are about 40, they're 40 minutes in length. Uh, the first period in the day is about 19 minutes, and that is uh, at South, it's called home base. At Thomas, it's called uh, homeroom. And during that time, uh, students are mixed. Uh, they could be uh, special ed and, and educa uh, regular general education students are mixed together. Um, and every teacher has a home base or homeroom. And at Thomas, there are, it's a bit of a larger group. What do you have about average about 20, 25? Yeah, about 25. Yeah, about 20, 25 kids. And there's two teachers involved. At South, there's one teacher with about 12 to 15 kids. And during that time, it's just uh, an opportunity uh, to take attendance, to uh, do some uh, SEL work, some social motion learning uh, work, to do some uh, work on organizational skills, executive functioning, things like that, and just to kind of have a place to call home. That the kids kind of, they, they really, uh, make a strong connection with their homeroom or home base teachers. Um, and that's a great place if something comes up, they can get some assistance. Realize that though you, 
we have special education students with the regular education students mixed. It is not a, a special education class, even if there's a special education teacher handling home base, okay, as you go through. Um, there are four of the class periods, uh, science, social studies, math, we call the, our core classes, and language arts is actually two class periods long, so it's 80 minutes in length. Students will have physical education every day, including a lunch, and then depending on your child's needs and, and where they're at, uh, our elective program, kids in sixth grade get a taste of everything, from art, music, uh, computer, media, arts, we call CMA, digital arts and design, dad, uh, STEM and drama classes. And those are Hexter programs, about six weeks long. Um, so you, your child will move from one uh, creative arts class to another throughout the school year to get a taste of it. When they get to seventh and eighth grade, then they can have some choices. Students can also take a foreign language. Now if your child has extra support, whether they're in a resource class, they may not have a foreign language or they may miss a creative arts depending on your child's needs. And that will be discussed during your transition meeting coming to the middle school. Um, I think I covered everything on my slide. Yep, that's about it. Thank you. All right, good evening. I'm Lauren Hammer. I'm a student service coordinator here at Thomas Middle School my first presentation so wish me luck all right um, so my job is to kind of just forecast what the continuum of services looks like for the middle school students in district 25 is that very small let's see all right hopefully you all can see that so I wanted to highlight um, numbers one and two um, Point number one discusses the idea of consult, which you might be familiar with. It's also offered at the elementary level. That's generally when our service providers like occupational therapists or speech pathologists provide indirect support to the students. So they do that through consultation, usually with the teachers, because the students are not requiring direct support or minutes. Um, the second area is talking about itinerant services. So these students are often within general education classes, but receive the extra support directly from occupational therapists, social workers, speech pathologists, and they're pulled out for those. Generally, I would say in the middle school, when those people pull out your students, they do it on a rotating basis, so they're not missing the same class every time, so they're not falling behind in their schoolwork. I'm gonna highlight here that there is a co-taught opportunity and a resource opportunity, extended resource opportunity, extended resource level two, as well as an individualized learning program. And that's what these folks here are gonna go into more depth about, kind of the meat of our programming um, within our buildings. For students who have more intense needs, just like at the elementary level, we can always explore if needed further supports through our public school opportunities and also through therapeutic day schools. Typically these options are explored when students have exhausted and revised their plans multiple times and we have to talk about other opportunities. Generally when we're looking at these opportunities are very restrictive and do not allow any opportunity to be with general education peers so we take them pretty seriously when recommending them. Additionally if needed we can explore residential placements if students exhaust even the therapeutic settings, as well as hospital and home services for students who cannot access school because of medical reasons. But now I'll turn it over to this wonderful staff to describe the programs that are more frequently used in our district. Good evening, my name is Yvette Rayberger and I'm a resource teacher here at Thomas Middle School. I wanna highlight a little bit about our resource class. Um, students who are eligible for special education might have a resource class that class period, students are working on things involving like executive functioning skills, teachers might be pre-teaching information to students, um, organizing their binders, assignment notebook, working on homework, uh, working on some of their academics as well. Students who have a speech only IEP typically would not be involved in a resource um, class period unless they have some academic goals. Uh, students in the resource class might participate in small group 
for tests, so if they need extended time on a test or if they're gonna start their test within the resource class period, they could be involved in that there as well. Uh, instructions also based on indiv individualized goals there. We also have a continuum in the middle school for the resource class program. We're always constantly working on students becoming more and more independent and also working on self-advocacy. So in the sixth grade, they might be working more on um, some, some times where like they're trying to ask more questions in class. And then in the eighth grade, we're working on more of transitional activities uh, where they're definitely advocating for themselves like coming to IEP meetings and things like that. Um, small group is also available in the resource program, which I'm gonna talk about next. So in the middle school, um, Lauren mentioned that we have a resource program and she mentioned we have the ERP levels and the ILP. So the resource program is a little bit different than the other programs. Students who are involved in the resource program typically might have some co-taught classes. They might be involved with some shared teaching assistance in the general education classes. They also might be involved in some small group classes for their ELA class or for their math class. It really is just based on their IEP and their individualized needs. They're involved in creative arts programs within the resource program. Not all students who are in the resource program have a resource class period. Again, it's based on their individualized needs. Students might be in all general education classes within the resource program. They might have support like in one of the classes or maybe multiple um, support within the small group classes, again, based on their needs. They all participate in a home base or a homeroom class period, which is period one. They have access to and get to be involved in PE, health, lunch as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nina Kufalias. I'm an eighth grade resource teacher here at Thomas. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the COTAC classes. Um, these classes are designed for students who need access to the general education curriculum. Concepts re routinely reinforced and retaught in the general education setting. It is a blend of gen ed students. Right in front of me. Okay, is that better? So um, let's see. It's a blend of general education and special education students. This allows special education teaching support um, within the general education classroom, so thus being co-taught. It is taught, taught by a special education teacher and a general education teacher. For integration opportunities, um, the offers differ by building and year, again, based on student needs. Um, as appropriate, students may attend general education core content like math, science, or social studies. We do also offer the small group classes. These classes are designed for students who need a slower paced instruction, uh, pre-teaching or reteaching of curriculum. It's offered for both math and ELA. Um, it is taught by a special education teacher. Um, we may use some of the general education curriculum or alternative curriculums depending on each of the student's individual needs. Um, students will attend general education science and social studies as well as health classes. Um, some students may be placed in a class with the teaching assistance support for classroom or testing accommodations, again, based on that student's individual need. So we do have world language versus resource period. So a resource class will take the place of a world language. Um, we do often have um, cases where students no longer need or require a resource class. At that time, we will look at considering placing that student into a world language course. Um, there is no world language requirement prior to high school. Um, certain colleges typically require two years of world language at the high school level. Um, regardless of middle school participation, there is no world language requirement for high school graduation. Um, placement and resource will be determined at the transition meeting. And again, speech only students should select a language. Hi, I'm Kaylee O'Neill. I'm a seventh grade resource teacher, but I have taught the extended resource program in the past. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, so this program is designed for students who are two or more grade levels below. Um, and all of these classes um, will be in like a small group setting. So 
they'll get a lot of individualized support if needed, and these students will require more than 50% of special education services each day. Um, our academic fo focus is research-based, so all of our curriculums used in the Extended Resource Program are research-based, um, and they really support each student and their needs. And students, again, are able to have the opportunity to attend general education classes with the support of a shared teaching assistant, but um, this is offered as appropriate, and students in the Extended Resource Program do not participate in world language. Um, and we offer small group ELA classes, math classes, and we also offer um, social studies and science as well. Next slide. Um, the extended resource program is a multi-grade program. So in these classes, there will be sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Again, they will be small groups, so no more than 12 students per class, and they also will have TAs in there with them. Lots of students will require push-in or pull-out services for speech, social work, OT, or PT, so it's really easy to schedule those minutes if needed. Students often utilize technology or assistive technology as needed. Again, they're able to have that individualized support if they need that. Um, students will, will still participate in IAR testing along with um, general education peers. And what's really nice is within the extended resource program, they are able to offer positive behavioral supports to assist with student skills, problem solving, and self-advocacy. Um, these classes are often at a modified pacing, so they kind of go as students need. Um, along with the IAR testing, they'll participate in MAP testing. What's nice also is that there are fewer transitions in the extended resource program because there are fewer staff members that these students work with. Um, and then on the next slide, I'll talk about how students are able to integrate with gen ed peers as well. So they have the opportunity to participate in creative arts, PE, homeroom, lunch, and some other classes if applicable. Um, and it's really nice to help with socialization. They're able to make a lot of friends, although they are in um, alternative classes. All right, at this part of our program, we're actually gonna switch out some of our presenters. So um, because we're trying to be socially distanced up here, if we wouldn't mind, we have a few presenters that are gonna switch with some other presenters. So give us just a second. Thank you for that. Hi, my name is Mary Beth Delaney, and I'm the Individualized Learning Program teacher at South. We rarely call it by the entire name, so it's ILP, just like ERP, and in most things, it's, it's just too long. Um, the ILP class in both locations is for students who are three or more years behind and across the board. It's not like they have a splinter skill or a splinter deficit. Um, these are students that typically have delays in reading, writing, math. Um, most of the students in the program also see the speech pathologist and the social worker. Um, we have an occupational therapist, physical therapist, adaptive PE teacher that works very closely with our program and consults on a regular basis. Um, the students are in a self-contained type classroom for 50% or more of their day um, with one teacher and two or three program assistants that stay consistent so there are many fewer transitions throughout the day. Um, we have pull-out services but we also do a lot of push-in services. For example, for the last few years, our speech pathologist co-teaches a social language class, one class period per week with our um, social worker. We have a, a language group, which our speech pathologist teaches with the supported ed facilitator or a uh, assistive technology facilitator through NSSEO. And then our social worker teaches an alternative health and safety class. So the students are in PE all year long. Uh, instead of missing one quarter for for health, they have an, a one day a week, one period a week, different health and safety class where we can focus on things that are more specific to the needs of our students. Um, things like hygiene, puberty, the ruler coursework that, that the whole district is doing. Um, we do some different things on self-advocacy, communication skills, 
they do things um, about holidays and things that are coming up in the in the building so that they can better participate how to join a group how to say no cyber issues um, Aaron's law but at their level at an, um, a level of sophistication that so that they can own the knowledge at that level um, this the ILP class is multi-grade just like the ERP class so there are sixth seventh and eighth graders there are some years that because of scheduling students eat with their same grade peers and there are years where they might all eat with the seventh grade because of scheduling so never more than one year above or below but that allows us to have some lunch group and some social groups during the lunch hour that they can all participate in there's never more than 10 students in the class and we do have program support we also have our teaching assistants go out into the general education classes they're the most familiar with the students and their needs so it's nice that they can go with them to the general education classes and to first facilitate participation and assist them in um, using their technology to the best of their ability and to continue to maintain participation but also independence um, most of our students take the um, alternative assessment for the state assessment and many of our uh, children don't take the map testing we just don't get enough information um, from those tests so so we rely more on classroom based assessments and goal work to determine progress we have sensory and movement opportunities I believe both schools have motor rooms and sensory areas that to help students self-regulate and use their coping skills so that they can always be their best selves um, most of the academics are functional in nature although we never put a cap on what we expect children to do so we continue to push as long as we can and but we also look at some functional skills for example in math class we might be working on addition subtraction some students even on multiplication um, but we also do reading a schedule and how to use a calendar and how to measure um, things like that um, we have a life skills class where we cover a variety of topics usually on a theme basis we might do a cooking unit right now we're doing a household tools unit we've done um, leisure skills we've done community helpers things that um, that they might see on the news or have a discussion with family members on so that, that they can better participate um, the goal is to move the students up as fast as we can so we do have some of our students that go to an ERP class or two or eventually move into the ERP program um, for home base or for some academics um, the students also have integration opportunities so they are in general education creative arts classes PE classes lunch classes uh, lunch looks a little different right now for everybody because of COVID so some of the students are eating in a smaller group setting just because we need to keep them socially distanced as best as we can when they have their masks off and our students can participate in all the extracurricular activities with or without support what's ever needed for that specific student um, so we have fewer transitions fewer staff members that they have to be um, familiar with but we still cover the same types of activities and the same types of um, classes All right, there we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amanda Mendez. I'm the behavior analyst at both South and Thomas. Um, for autism support, students transitioning from communications are included in their homeschool ILP. Um, additionally, there is the board certified behavior analyst um, who is available to support the district. So some of these supports are going to be more general supports for the classroom as a whole and for the teacher, um, such as assistance with things like structured teaching, errorless teaching, um, that data collection, communication programs, social skills training, and sensory integration. Um, however, for students who have specific needs, um, the behavior analyst is also able to go in and provide some of that general support. So some observations um, and supporting the teacher with some guidance on what to do, as well as more specific problem solving. So that's gonna look like your assessments as well as um, helping support the behavior intervention plan. Hi, my name is Megan Moser, and I am one of the speech language pathologists at South Middle School. 
Um, both middle schools have two speech and language pathologists that work with all the students in the resource and the ERP ILP programs. And it doesn't matter which program you're in, if you get speech and language, you can still get that. It just would depend on who's working with you. Um, some students are what we call speech only. So their IEP only has their speech and language services on it. And if that's the case, then the SLP is typically the case manager. And we would schedule the services throughout the day. Um, if they are in, since they're speech only, they're typically not getting any other academic services or supports. So we, when I pull them for services, it's usually rotated um, throughout their class schedule. So they're not missing the same academic class every week. And typically students, um, when they're in middle school, they don't wanna miss their academic classes either. So we work really hard to um, teach them to advocate, to have them go to their teachers, let them know that they're missing, and to work with the student to find a good time for them, whether that be more of their creative arts class one week and then PE the next week. Um, sometimes we do lunch groups if they have social language goals so that they're not missing that class because we don't want the students to become too overwhelmed um, and feel like they're missing out on their academics. Um, if students are in the resource program, um, we, as SLP, we support their language skills um, based on their IEP goals. Um, those typically are pullout services. And if they are in the resource program and have a resource class, that is typically when they would get that support. Um, in sixth grade, um, whether it's once a week or if it's twice a week, sometimes we'll set up a lunch group and during that resource time. But it also allows the SLP to go into that resource class and provide some support in that area as well if need be and if appropriate. Um, and then for the other two instructional programs with extended resource and ILP, they can also receive their speech and language support. Um, it's highly collaborative. The SLP works very closely with the team um, of the teachers to best support those students. They can be push in or pull out. It just depends on what is what the schedules look like that year. Um, working on the social skills development, those pragmatic language skills. Um, in ILP, if they're having community outings or life skills, lots of times the SLP will work on that with the teacher and with the whole class setting because language is everywhere and it is really more functional in that case. I'm Rosanna Wildman. I'm one of the social workers at South Middle School. And I'm, just, I'm going to talk about some additional supports that might also be uh, part of the IEP for your students, or for your children. Um, so some students will receive occupational therapy or physical therapy, and that'll also be uh, either a push-in or pull-out model. Uh, and then as for social workers, there are, I'm one of four social workers at South. Um, there's one social worker that works specifically with the ILP and ERP programs. And then the, there's three of us that work with um, both uh, special education students and the regular education students. And we both, we do push in and pull out models of support. We will do small group or individual lunch groups. And sometimes we do issue specific support groups such as um, grief and loss groups sometimes depending on the group of students that we have that year. And then some students also receive adaptive uh, PE and that would be direct or consult services and those would be given during PE usually um, or during general education classes. There is a TA support available for daily PE as needed depending on the student's IEP. And then we also have vision and hearing um, supports and that is provided by the NSSEO staff. All right. Um, one of the things that I think sets District 25 apart from many other districts is that we really offer a wide range of supports, and hopefully you're hearing that from our presentation tonight. But we're not done. I have some more supports to share with you. Um, response to intervention, RTI math and reading classes are available to all students, general education students, and then depending on a child's IEP goals, um, students with IEPs can be eligible for RTI classes and math and reading as well. We offer lunch support, so if we have a student who um, currently at the elementary level is getting some 
teacher assistant support during recess and lunch. That's something that we'll consider at the middle school environment as well. We, now we're gonna talk about the fun things that we offer here at the middle school level. Um, we have academic and social clubs. We also, in both buildings, offer a wide range of extracurricular clubs and activities, including sports. And all of these things are available to all students. Um, if we determine that a student would do better in a club or an activity with the assistance of a teacher, that's something we can provide after school as well. Um, I do want to point out that if a student, any and all students can try out for our sport teams, um, but please know that um, that would be a tryout and um, it's not a guaranteed participation depending if a student has an IEP. It doesn't work like that. All kids can try out. Um, but we really do hope that between all the clubs and activities that we offer, that our students will get involved in something in addition to just the academics. And like I said, we can provide some support if support is needed during that extracurricular activity time. Hi, I'm Deanna Nabar. I'm one of the resource teachers at South Middle School. So I'm gonna talk about, you've heard about all the programming, now it's kind of the process of getting your children ready to come to middle school. So that's the transition process. And We'll be starting that very shortly. Um, we have a breakfast tomorrow, I know at South, that we'll meet with some of the fifth grade staff. I think Thomas is already preparing for that as well. Just to start those dialogues of letting all the staff that are current fifth grade teachers know what middle school offers as well, just like we did to you. Um, and then coming up in February, we'll start some articulation meetings where we'll meet with your current case managers and your children, that, those resource teachers that they work with and know your students, your children really well. Um, and kind of see what their program is like at the elementary school and how it would kind of fit into the middle school or start making recommendations with that. And those will happen, like I said, coming up in February. And then we'll transition into the transition meetings with you as parents. So those will happen later in March and you'll be invited to come. And that'll happen at your elementary school, your home school. Um, your current case manager will be there. Um, and then a representative from middle school will be there. And then an admin will be there as well. So. Those meetings, um, and then obviously parents, uh, you'll be part of those meetings, just like a regular IEP meeting. Those transition meetings are considered an IEP meeting. Um, if it's just the transition to middle school, we would be going over their current goals, um, and then we might be looking at their, um, um, so we'd be looking at their current goals and accommodations, and then if it was part of their annual review, if you have spring annual reviews, it would be a joint meeting for that. Um, sometimes the, Sometimes the accommodations that they currently have at elementary school don't quite fit exactly at middle school, so we work as a team to try and figure out how all of their current services would mesh and, and work well at the middle school. Um, and obviously our goal is always to try and keep pushing them towards independence, towards um, to really advocate for themselves. So that's the goal all the way through. And based on their needs, whatever they need, whatever their current programming is, we always look back and forth um, to see how we can keep continually push the continuum of getting them ready for that gen ed setting as much as possible whenever they're ready. All right, um, you'll have to forgive me because I think that I stole this slide from Dr. Morrison, but it's only because I get really excited about this part. This is the part of the presentation where we talk about your role as a parent. So listen up because this is where we're gonna describe how um, the things that we'd like you to do and how you will be involved. Um, so we are a team, all of us, and you, the parents. We work together, we make decisions together. We are all part of the team, and when appropriate, your child joins that team and can advocate in the meetings as well. So please know that we determine the most appropriate level of support to meet your child's needs and their IEP goals together when we meet. Uh, we plan and we structure the supports that your child will need in order to be successful in sixth grade. We bring to the table the perspective of how has it worked? What have we learned? What do we do really well here? We bring the school perspective, but you know your child best and you bring that parent perspective of what your experiences have been and then together we, we, we figure out a plan. We design an individualized transition support plan if needed. So there are times where we have students who um, have different levels of need. Maybe there is a student who's extremely anxious or a parent in, in which case we can work with you to figure out a plan to start that school off right. Um, Dr. Morrison and I are here all summer long, so it's not uncommon for us to have students and parents come in the building just to, just to get used to it. Um, we do encourage summer school as a way for your child to get used to middle school as well, but we really can design something that's individualized for your transition process. 
Um, the, it's really important that we communicate how these supports will be implemented um, for you, for your child, and, and we talk about what that looks like throughout their school day. Um, please remember that the IEP document itself is fluid. Um, class placements, the class schedule, and the um, minutes that your students of service that your student is receiving, that can all be changed as needed. Um, we can get together and meet as needed. So just want to reiterate that we are a team through this process and we're relying on you to communicate with us and likewise. Yeah, as you know, Lori and Deanna was saying, we work together, we're a team. We, you know, there's a whole lot, there's a ton that just was presented tonight and trying to remember all that's there. Our goal is to, to kind of guide you and help you with our process of transitioning in and our experiences. And as Lori was just saying, we, you know, we do our best to try to match it, but then, you know, there's changes that take place, whether it's, you know, right away or later on in the year or the next year. All depends on your child, your child's transition and their growth into the school. You know, we're looking forward to having a great school year, working and, and meeting your child and, and, and you as well and, and working together uh, to make sure that, you know, uh, we are able to, to get that transition off the ground quickly. Some kids transition really well and real quick and it's simple. Others takes a little bit and that's, you know, we're used to that. We understand that. So some of the kids need a little more hand holding than others and others, they just go. They say goodbye and push out, you know, as they run out the door. Um, you know, so, you know, if you ever have any questions, if you're ever concerned about anything, feel free to contact us. Contact administration, contact the IEP team uh, members for your child, and we'll do everything we can to make sure we either answer your questions or help you through the transition process. As Dr. Morrison just stated, we, there is a lot of support that is offered to you as parents, and we are very fortunate in the Department of Student Services to have coordinators that are assigned to each of the buildings that you probably know or will see their name that will help facilitate some of these IEP meetings for you. Um, we have Dina Albrecht. She is at Dryden, Ivy, Patton, and Olive. Melanie Soprano is at Windsor. Diane Kafka is at Greenbrier. Lauren Hammer here tonight is at, here at Thomas. And Lisa Cramp is at South. And then again, we have Dr. Morrison and Mrs. Namowitz here that um, can assist you as well. Um, at this point, it concludes our presentation um, and we open the floor for questions. And if you have them, please ask, and I'll actually repeat it because we won't be able to hear your question on the recording. There was one thing I just wanted to, to say. The resource teachers typically have a student on their caseload for one year. There are sixth grade resource teachers, seventh grade resource teachers, and eighth grade resource teachers. In ERP and ILP, we might be a student's case manager for all three years or as long as they're in our program. Thank you. Are there any questions? If not, that's okay too. Yes, sir. So for the purpose of the recording, he would like to know the difference between the speech and language services and the resource program. I think Megan is going to answer this one. Sure. So um, for speech only, typically they're eligible for services under speech and language impairment. So they only have goals and only receive services in the area of speech and language. So maybe it's articulation, maybe it's expressive language, maybe it's receptive language. But if students are in the resource program, they have more academic-based goals. So they might need a small group for reading or a small group for math. Um, they can all have speech and language in addition to those services, but they receive um, other supports as well, more academic-driven. Does that help? Microphone. 
So if he sees the reading specialist, um, when you kind of translate that to middle school, that looks like reading intervention. So you're right, it's, it's the kind of the gray in between. It's not, it's not either one of those. So he hasn't been entitled for academic support yet necessarily in reading, but he's getting some additional reading support as part of um, MTSS, the multiple tiers systems of support. So maybe tier two um, for that. And so if he does need that going towards middle school, we do offer that as a class and I don't think we really touched on that much tonight. Mm -hmm. If I heard correctly, your question is, are all teachers involved in the IEP process, the special education teachers as well as the gen ed teachers? And how, how are the general education teachers informed of what your students, your child's needs are? Okay, go for it. Um, so, Part of the IEP meeting, you will have a resource case manager that would be there and you would have one gen ed representative um, that would come to the actual meeting. Um, but we have had other occurrences that at both teams, we meet daily during that team time when your child goes to like creative arts, that's when, at least at South, that's when we meet as a team. I'm not sure if Thomas is the exact thing, but we meet with all the teams so we get input from the entire team. Um, but to, usually just for that meeting, it would be one. But we have had other meetings like in the beginning of the year if you have a parent have a concern um, we can have it during a team time and you can request to have certain teachers if you want to have other things that would be outside of the IEP. That would be more of a general ed team request that you'd want to just kind of maybe get a check in with your team or sometimes at the beginning of the year some parents want to have, you know, just a phone conference with a couple of the teachers. There's multiple ways that we can do it, but as far as the IEP goes, it would just be one gen ed teacher that would be represented of the team. And the case managers generally are assigned to teams, so they bring the information back. So just like at your elementary IEP meetings, when not all the teachers may come, but somebody is still responsible for articulating it to them. So, you know, the resource teacher is assigned to the team, and then she brings back any updates, accommodation changes, and communicates them. And then also at the beginning of the year, um, when we are divided on teams, once your children are split up on teams, the resource manager or case manager, depending on who's in charge, they would report all of their accommodations and fill the rest of the team in on making sure that we are meeting those accommodations of those students when we, and then check in with them. So they would get a list of all of that conveyed to them as well. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. The question is, are there summer school classes to help with the transition and when are those made public? So we don't typically have a fifth to sixth grade transition class. Um, however, we do offer extended school year for those students that qualify for um, sp support in the summer. Um, additionally, if you feel that your child needs maybe an individual tour or needs to come to the middle school for to find a locker to walk the schedule that we we have done that several times and you can just reach out to um, Dr. Morrison or Mrs. Namowitz and they they will help you with that. Lori's going to add something here. Um, I would just add that we, um, we offer summer school enrichment, so extended school year summer school is the one piece that your child may be eligible for, depending on their IP. But then we offer enrichment classes, and those are classes that um, you know, any student could choose to sign up for. Um, and it may be like a, a book club study type of class. Um, this past summer, we did have um, like an introduction to middle school class. I think that class was kind of born out of, you know, the COVID need that we saw, um, but it was really well received. So I would anticipate having that class again this summer. But again, that's an enrichment class that um, you would have to sign up for and it would be available to all students. 
And um, that's through the summer university mm -hmm. versus extended school year, two separate programs. Extended school year is at um, Greenbrier typically, and it will be this summer, and summer U is at South. Okay. Yeah, and, and with that, even if they just come into the school to, to, to be in one of the programs, uh, one of the fun programs or whatever, they're in the school, they're in the middle school, they can walk around, they can find the locations. It's just another time for them to be in there so that when they get there that first day, they're already acquainted with the school. You know, and, and that's why we do do a lot of, a lot of people come during the school year and we do tours and we walk around and we find classrooms. Uh, most of the time, if, it, if it's closer towards the beginning of the school year, we may already have their schedule ready and be able to walk their schedule and find their specific rooms and do those types of things. And we're more than happy to do that. You just need to, you know, let us know and we'll work out a time and date. Yes, sir. The question is, how do we determine if your child would would go to world language? Correct. Okay. That's really a great question. So glad that you asked because I think it's an important conversation to have. As a team, we discuss that and we really talk about how your child's been functioning as a fifth grader and, and we explain the specifics of the benefits of coming to a resource class. And as a team, we try and make that decision. Um, based on what's best for your, your child. And what I will tell you is that um, if we hear things like the student needs very little support with day-to-day -day assignments and um, those executive functioning skills of organi organizing themselves, those are all key things that we really hone in on during the resource class and we feel are very valuable as opposed to the world language class. We can always enroll in world language as a seventh grader or as an eighth grader, it really just depends. Um, but that resource class is such a great introduction to middle school. Um, it's a nice way to have a point in their day where they can take a deep breath, have that assistance in a small group from the resource teacher to teach them how to be a middle school student and how to manage all nine of their classes. Um, it's a time where they can get some extra assistance, um, studying for a particular subject or reteaching something. So it really just depends on what the child's needs are and that we can learn a ton from from you and from the teacher that they currently have. You, you sure. know, the, you have to realize there are students, there are children coming in who are not ready to take a world language. They may not be ready until they get to high school to do that. So yes, we'd like to get them started, give them some background in a world language so that as they move up, you know, into high school, they, they can, you know, start further down the line. But they don't have to. So you have to realize, you know, they're not behind the eight ball if they don't take a foreign language. I know people kind of get stuck on that, but it, you know, there's just people who are not ready for that, you know, special ed students or regular ed students, you know, and we see that every year. So please know that, that that's not a, a be all end all. You could also have a general education student that takes three years of a world language here that then decides freshman year, I've already taken Spanish, now I wanna learn French. It really truly just depends. And then I just wanna add, because I you were asking me before, I think, and maybe this is where you're going, is if your student or child is getting some extra support in reading or math as an intervention class, in the middle school there's only 10 periods in the day, so if you're gonna take that class, it has to replace something. So that's the discussion, like if you were gonna be in a reading intervention or a math intervention class, it would be either a foreign language, world language class or a creative arts class that would have to be dropped in order to make room for that class in your schedule. So it's just a conversation to have. I also wanted to, to make sure that you understand that at the beginning of the school year, we have things in place for all sixth graders. The first multiple days, there are many additional adults in the building to help students with their lockers because there are many students who cannot get those lockers open or get them closed or get everything in. Um, there's no tardies the first multiple days of class. We expect students to get lost. There's people in the hallway to help give directions. There's, so whether your student has an IEP or not, there are many, many supports in place to help them be successful the first many days of school.
And then I just wanted to add as well that you realize that the foreign language is an academic class. So I mean, it's a fun class, all classes are fun, but it is an academic class with another. So sometimes students just need another space in their day. If they are you know, getting lots of support in other areas, they need that resource time to process that information, to have more time to ask their questions or get their testing accommodations and just kind of a downtime. But otherwise, um, if they don't, they, they have all academic classes that world language is requiring lots of vocabulary and tests and quizzes and speeches and things. So I just wanted to make sure that it's not just an exploratory course. So the question is, if they don't take it in sixth grade and then they take it in seventh grade, how much have they missed? So really what we do is we, you know, if a child doesn't take it in sixth grade but wants to do it in seventh, they will come down and actually take the sixth grade session. We are able to adjust the schedule enough to do that. And then they, they will then take in eighth grade, seventh grade section of it. That happens as well as if a student moves into the district as a seventh grader or an eighth grader and hasn't taken that level, they would take the um, sixth grade introduction level. Is the resource program one class and is the extended resource program two? So I think it gets confusing because resource is the name of a class and it is also the name of a, of a level of support. So a resource class you can have in the ERP class, the ILP class, or as a resource student. But a student in the resource program could have one, two, three, four special ed classes. The students that are in extended resource are typically in there for all of their core content classes. And the same thing with the ILP classes. They are in a small group ILP class for all of their core content classes. Yeah, so one way to think of it is the ERP and the IRP are more self-contained programs. And if you're within the resource program, you're pushed down to gen ed a bit more. So at the IEP meetings, when you talk about percentages in special ed, generally, not always, but the students who are in the self-contained are 50% or higher in a special education setting throughout their day. And if you're in the resource program, you're generally falling more in general education. So it's kind of a categorical name as well as individual classes. And so I just wanted to make sure that it's really based on your students' needs when we have those conversations with your fifth grade team. Um, basically what they're currently getting. So if your child is currently getting like pull out reading support or pull out math support or they're getting co-taught, you know, push in support, it kind of transfers to what would look best and how that would meet at the middle school level. So Mary Beth was right. It is confusing even for our students because on their schedule we'll say I have resource math and resource reading and resource class. So resource is for our whole umbrella program of similar to what your students would be getting in the gen ed classroom at their elementary schools. But then based on their needs, they might be in a gen ed regular math, but they might need a small group resource language arts. And across middle school, whether whatever they have for language arts, it's a block schedule. So they would have two classes for that language arts, no matter which, whether it's small group and where they're at. And then again, on their individual needs, sometimes students need an extra reading class or an extra writing class, depending on their needs, and that would be an additional. And again, we have to start piecemealing them where they miss either foreign language or other things. So. The question is, if a student hasn't finished a curriculum at, the, at fifth grade, would we move it and have that child start where they left off at the middle school? This is all really like an, an individualized case-by-case -case basis. I think if the team determines that Wilson has to be picked up for the student to access education, 
then we would do our best to create the appropriate listen group. If there's another linked, if there are potentially a group of students coming in from all the different buildings and they all need similar reading instruction and can all be dealt with in a different curriculum, then we may suggest that. It's kind of all on an individual case by case basis. Um, you know, we do work at what the kids need, what the IEP is saying, and if, if a program is working, we do our best to continue it. But also want to consider the least restrictive environment because there are some programs that can be extremely restricting, such as Wilson can be extremely small groups and isolating. So we like to kind of push our kids a little bit to have more access to peers. Well, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate um, you taking your time out to learn about the, our transition process. Um, we will have this wonderful presentation on our website, so feel free to review it and review it and review it. No, I'm kidding, but uh, feel free to reach out to anybody and uh, we can answer your questions. Thank you very much for coming. Safe drive home.